like shooting a rifle to raise the rifle skill. The max skill you can achieve is Hey guys, Dantix here, bringing you another Cyberpunk 2077 video. Our eight year long wait is almost done. It's crazy to think that if you were 12 and saw the first teaser trailer, you'd now be 20. So in this video, I'll be covering the top five features of Cyberpunk that has me pumped for November the 18th. Unless you're following the game religiously, then you're at peak pump level and nothing's gonna help you. Before we start, my friend the Mad Queen is giving away a Cyberpunk Edition Xbox and I'm giving away my 2080 Super and copies of Cyberpunk. Check the links below for more. Also, since you're here, press that subscribe and bell button. You know, you can always unsub later if I drop the ball. Okay, let's begin with number one, choice. There's an absolute ton of choice in Cyberpunk 2077. The first choice you'll face is how your character looks cosmetically. There's a slider for everything from hairstyle to pubic hairstyle, from face shape to yes, penis size, but I'm sure you've already seen millions of articles on that. Your look can be changed with cosmetic gear, so if you find a style you like, it can be placed over your stat-based gear and worn with pride. No patchwork matching gear like in World of Warcraft. Speaking of gear, you can equip items that influence your stats, and they also come with modification slots to further customize your playstyle. The next choice is your life path. You pick between Street Kid, Corpo, and Nomad. This choice will start you out in a different prologue and introduce you to different characters that will pop up throughout the rest of the game. Beyond that significant point of difference, your life path will also influence dialogue in the game, offering unique choices in situations that give you the edge. For example, a Corpo life path will be able to detect and call out the fact that Meredith Stout has put a virus on the credit chip you get during the Maelstrom Gang mission, whereas the Street Kid or Nomad wouldn't have that choice. So dialogue is another choice, but you can also choose to walk away from conversations you don't want to have or to say nothing at all, which is a choice in itself as people might not react kindly to you ignoring them or appreciate you listening. Leaving Jackie waiting for you while you muck around in the sandbox will have him calling asking where you are. You also have a choice with what weapons, cyberware and modifications you use, more on that later. You have choice on how you build your character with a ridiculous amount of perks and skills, more on this later as well. Then you have the sheer amount of ways to approach your objectives. The Maelstrom gang mission I mentioned was said to have 7 ways to approach once inside. From letting the deal go ahead, walking out of there with new friends, to having a firefight, to even finding the old leader and helping him coup. Which brings me to number two, unique rewards. You earn unique items, weapons, gear, mods, cyberware, and cars through activities and choices in the game. This sounds fairly standard for an RPG, but it isn't that simple. You aren't going to get a prompt box appear before you take a mission that tells you all the potential rewards. No, instead, you're going to need to be observant. See a gun on the hip of an NPC you like? Perhaps get friendly with them and they'll offer it to you. Or maybe remove it from their corpse. <laughs> the game is going to put you in situations where you need to make hard choices. Do you keep someone alive that you like? Or help them part with their possessions? Do you finish a mission or deviate in order to have a shot at a different reward? In the same Maelstrom mission, there's an iconic, which is the highest rarity, pistol on the Maelstrom leader called the Chaos Pistol. You can choose to shoot him in the head right away during the Mexican standoff. If you do so, you avoid a boss fight with him and get your hands on this iconic pistol right away. But you lose any chance of being friends with these particular gang goons and potentially miss out on other rewards down the track. Like I mentioned, these are unique rewards, so each playthrough there will be some that you simply won't find or be able to get due to your choices and life path. You may not even realize you miss them. This system encourages replayability and rewards making choices you want to make rather than just making them for the rewards that they offer. This brings me to number three, weapons, cyberware and mods. I mentioned that there are different rarities. They start at Ordinary, which is your lowest quality, then go to Unusual, Rare, Epic, Legendary, and finally, Iconic. Legendary are your highest quality in terms of raw stats and modification slots. When you find a Legendary gun, you're definitely going to want to stop and take a look. Iconic is similar to Legendary stat-wise, but they also offer unique quirks. These might not necessarily make the item better, but will offer a unique way to play. 
These are only found on particularly dangerous enemies, difficult situations, or at the end of quest lines. Cyberware is the same, the highest quality and black market cyberware being hard to come by. You have five slots for cyberware, one for your eyes, one for your head, one for your body, one for your arms, and one for your legs. Installing these mods will do anything from giving you deadly mantis blades to letting you see better and further away. Within weapons you have different brands, from budget arms which are so cheap they're intended to be picked up from a vending machine during your weekly shop and thrown away instead of reloaded, to Arasaka smart weapons which you'd have to be rich or opportune to afford. Weapons have three types, power, tech and smart. Power weapons can ricochet off walls and their path can be seen with cyber eye implants. Tech weapons can be charged for more powerful shots and can pierce through cover and walls which you can see through with special cyberware. And finally, smart weapons use self-propelled rounds to track targets, but will need cyberware to make better use of these. You can also find Borg weapons, which are weapons intended for fully cyberized individuals, as you need a metal body in order to not be blown apart by the recoil of these monsters. Both cyberware and weapons have mod slots. There are two kinds of weapon mods that you can add. The ones that fit on the exterior, like scopes which increase accuracy and silences which reduce noise, and the interior which more drastically changes a weapon from giving them non-lethal rounds or incendiary properties. Cyberware can also be modified. The Mantis Blades, for example, can have electric properties added. Like mentioned, you can also modify your gear as well, which can add to your playstyle. A high tech skill will influence how you can modify your stuff as well as create new stuff. Number 4. Attribute Skills and Perks One of the many choices you'll have to make is how to build and play your character. This is an RPG with deep systems after all. At the start of the game you'll be offered points to place in the 5 different attributes. Body, Intelligence, Reflexes, Technical and Cool. If you want an exhaustively in-depth breakdown, check out my Skills and Perks video. These attributes influence your stats passively, but also influence the skills tied to them. Skills are raised by doing what the skill is, like shooting a rifle to raise the rifle skill. The max skill you can achieve is governed by the attribute level. Within skills, there is a perk tree for each. These will give you an idea of what to expect. So an example would be, if you wanted to go ninja, you would put points into reflex and start using blades. If you have 7 in reflex, you could get the blade skill to 7. This would unlock choices within the blade perk tree. You may also want to put attribute points into cool and raise up the stealth skill. So, when your skill with a weapon is low, you'll be slightly less accurate, the recoil will be huge, and you'll struggle to reload. You won't be shooting wildly like in Mass Effect 1, but you won't be proficient. These are the least frustrating way CD Projekt Red could express a lower skill. However, as your skill increases, your recoil will drop to almost negligible. You'll reload faster and be slightly more accurate. Animations will change as well, and you'll notice your character swings the sword better, for example. Do note you'll be able to re-specialize your character during the game if you want to develop a new skill. And if you want to develop a new skill, you should check out Skillshare. For those who haven't heard of them, they're an online learning community where millions come together to take the next step in their learning journey, be it to share knowledge or learn new skills. I learned my video production skills from this man here. Oh. Hi there! <laughs> Didn't see you! Gordy is charismatic and really knows his stuff. I especially enjoyed the sound design tips. Topics include graphic design, photography, writing, animation, marketing, music, web development and more. This isn't just about learning a new skill though, it's about starting a career. So to begin your journey, follow the link below. A bonus is the first 1000 people who click the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium and I highly recommend it. Which brings me to number 5. Body Language and Awareness The world of cyberpunk is a dangerous place and it's filled with morally ambiguous individuals. You really can't trust anyone except yourself, so keep your eyes out. Some NPCs will display noticeable body language when talking to you. Some may subtly reach for something behind their backs before they attack you. You may even see suspicious cars pull up across the road or gang members getting closer. You're encouraged to look for these signs as it gives you a chance to preemptively respond. If you feel your life is in danger, you can run away, or get to a more defensible position, or even shoot the NPC in question before they attack you. You can use body language to turn negotiations to your advantage, as you may even be able to detect both truth and lies. 
Remember, you aren't locked in when it comes to talking to others like you are in, say, Mass Effect or other dialogue-driven titles. Instead, you can move around freely and respond when you want to. Taking your time not responding can get you in trouble, but it could also save your life. It might take time getting used to the sheer amount of choice you have beyond just dialogue-based responses. So those were my top five. What did you think? What would you add to this list? Are you excited for the game? Let me know below. Do the standard YouTube clicky clicky as it really helps me a lot. And I'll be back very soon with more cyberpunk and RPG content. Ciao friends.